projectiles. And these are projectiles which are not launched horizontally. They're launched at some other angle. And we're going to try to figure out how do we find the time they're in the air and their range. Before we do that, though, we need to just make sure we have two skills on board. The first one is how to find the velocity components. So if I fire a projectile at, for example, some angle theta above the horizontal, then my initial velocity, my launch velocity, is not the initial velocity in the y direction or the x direction. We need to find the components of this vector to figure out how fast it's moving horizontally. So that would be this uh, component right here tells us how fast it's moving to the right or horizontally. And this component tells us how fast we're moving vertically. So we call this the velocity in the x direction initial. So that's the variable we're going to assign to that component. And this component here, we're going to assign the velocity in the y direction initial. So it's up and down, so it's the y direction. And then we got to just be able to find those two components because we're going to use those in our solution. So if we use cosine, cosine tells us that the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse is some ratio, which is called the cosine of the angle. So we can write that like this. And then if I multiply both sides by v0, I will be left with the velocity in the x direction initial. So this component right here, this horizontal component, can be found by taking the vector, the initial velocity, that's the hypotenuse, times the cosine of the angle. The sine of the angle is the ratio of the opposite side, so it would be the velocity in the y direction initial divided by the initial velocity. And we can solve that for the velocity in the y direction initial. So these two are in your toolbox, and they are what we're going to use to find the initial components of the velocity in the x and the y direction. Okay, so for horizontally launched projectiles, it was easy. The velocity in the y direction was always zero. Um, the velocity in the x direction was just whatever the velocity was, but now it's more complicated, and that's how we're going to find components. Okay, so that's the first thing we need. The second thing we need to do is talk about quadratics for a minute. So quadratics are second-order polynomials, and they can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. It has to equal zero. And there's a way to solve the quadratic equation every time, but we don't always need it. And sometimes it's a lot more useful to be able to solve it um, without having to use the full formula. So let's look at a couple cases really quickly. First of all, if a is 0, so if a is 0, this thing right here goes away, and it turns out that it's not even a quadratic anymore. It's a linear equation because the highest power of x is 1. So if a is 0, all you get is bx plus c equals 0, and you can solve that directly, subtract c from both sides, divide by b, and you get the solution that x is minus c over b. All right, so that's an easy one if a happens to be 0. It's possible that b could be 0. And so if b is 0, there's no linear term right here. It goes away, and we can write it as ax squared plus c equals 0. And again, we don't need the quadratic formula to solve this. We can bring c to the other side, divide both sides by a. That gives us negative c over a. And then take the square root of both sides, and you will have x by itself. So you can extract the root directly without needing to use the quadratic formula if b is 0. The last special case is what happens if c is 0. So if c is 0, you don't have a term here. And so it looks like this, ax squared plus bx equals 0. Now, in this case, both of these terms have an x in them. So we're going to factor that x out. I can write it like this. If I factor an x out of this term, I get ax. If I factor an x out of this term, I just get b. If you're not sure if that's right or not, try distributing to get it back. So if you take x times ax, you get ax squared. x times b gives you bx. So um, you can check your work that way. But both these terms have an x. We can factor it out. Okay. Now up here, this has an x in it, but this doesn't. That's why we can't factor that x out in that case. So as long as c is 0, you can factor the x out. And now you have two options. If the product of two expressions is equal to 0, then either the first expression equals 0 or the second expression equals 0. So either x equals 0 or ax plus b must equal 0. This is an easy one to solve. x equals 0, you're done. You can solve this for x pretty easily. x would equal minus b over a. 
So if c is zero, you don't need the quadratic equation. You can solve for x directly by factoring it out here, okay? All right, the last case is what happens if a is not zero and b is not zero and c is not zero? Well, if they are all non-zero, then you gotta use the quadratic and you just gotta grind away, okay? So we only need the quadratic if a, b, and c are all non-zero. If any one of them is zero, we can solve it a different, easier way, all right? Okay, so now let's think about what happens to a projectile. Imagine we live in a world where there's no gravity. So I take a golf ball, I launch it at 50 meters per second, 36.87 degrees above the horizon, and there's no gravity. So I wanna figure out how fast is it going horizontally and vertically. So the initial velocity horizontally would just be the velocity times the cosine of the angle, which when you plug in 50 times the cosine of 36.87, you get 40 meters per second. The velocity in the y direction will be v times the sine of theta, which you can plug in and you can show that it's 30 meters per second. So what that means is every single second that goes by, this projectile goes 40 meters horizontally and 30 meters vertically. So if I were to plot its path, here's where it starts. One second later, it has gone 40 meters horizontally and up 30. See, so it's at, it's at 30 here. In another second, it goes another 40 meters horizontally and up another 30. And in another second, it goes over 40 and up 30. And it would continue to do this forever if there was no gravity. But now we need to ask ourselves, what does gravity do? So we've talked about this before, but if you drop a ball and you ask, how far does it fall? In one second, a ball will fall five meters. In two seconds, it'll fall 20 meters. In three seconds, it'll fall 45 meters. So we are just taking one half of the acceleration of gravity times t squared to figure these out. So if a ball is dropped, this is how far it will fall. Um, based on how long it falls. So we're gonna use that here because this blue path is where the projectile would go if there was no gravity. But obviously there's gravity on our planet, so we have to factor that in. So we're gonna start with a red ball right here. It's at zero, zero. In one second, it would go over 40 meters and it would go up 30 meters, but during that time, it's gonna fall five meters. So it's actually gonna be right here at 25 um, meters instead of at 30 meters, it's gonna fall five meters. Now, in the next second, it's gonna go over another 40 meters. And instead of being here in two seconds, it falls 20 meters. So we gotta go down 20 meters and we mark where it lands, where it would be. So it's right there. In three seconds, it would be here without gravity. And so with gravity, it's gonna fall 45 meters down from there, which we can then plot right there. In four seconds, it would be here. It will go just as far horizontally, but it will fall 80 meters. So if you count 80 meters down from there, it's gonna be right there. And then in five seconds, it would be there, falling 125 meters from where it would have been without gravity. And in six seconds, it's gonna fall about 180 meters from where it would have been without gravity, which is back on the ground. So the actual projectile is gonna follow this parabola right here, okay? And so we can see that based on this sort of um, conceptual approach, the range of this golf ball should be somewhere around 240 meters, okay? So that's sort of a, a rough estimate of where it would be um, based on how much gravity pulls an object down in any given amount of time. But the point is, in the horizontal direction, even though gravity is pulling it down, it still goes 40 meters every second horizontally. All right, let's solve this problem exactly now, though. So this is my first of two example problems. So we have a golf ball. It's hit on a level course. Initially, it's moving 50 meters per second at 36.87 degrees above the horizontal. We want to find the range of the golf ball. So we are gonna start with a diagram. A diagram must show a coordinate system, the X and Y axis we're using, and it must show the path of the projectile. So my projectile starts here, it goes up, 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 and it comes back down, and it lands back on the ground, and it says that the ground is a level course, okay? So that's important. 
The next thing we do is we make our variable list and we fill it out. One thing we know is the acceleration in the x direction is zero. That's always true, okay? Another thing we know is that it starts on the ground and it ends on the ground. So delta y happens to be zero in this case. We also know the acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.81. Gravity acts in the y direction, whether it's moving in the x direction or not. Okay, so now we're going to take our initial velocity, the 50 meters per second, and the 36.87 degrees, and we're going to calculate the velocity in the x direction initial. Okay, so when we plug in those numbers, we get 40 meters per second. So that's going to go right here. That's the velocity in the x direction initial. We can also calculate the velocity in the y direction initial. That's going to be 50 times the sine of the angle. Plug that in your calculator and you get 30 degrees. So we're going to put that right over here. That's the velocity in the y direction initial. Okay? And now we have enough information to solve the y problem for the time. All right? So our plan is going to be to solve the y problem for the time. So delta y equals the velocity in the y direction initial times time plus 1 half a t squared. And these are the accelerations and the velocities in the y direction. Now, because the delta y is zero, we can write it like this, okay? And so this is like that case where you don't have a constant term in the quadratic, okay? I just have v zero, uh, the velocity in the y direction times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared equals zero, and I can factor out the t in both of those expressions. If I factor out the t, I'm left with the velocity in the y direction initial, from there, and then here I'm left with one half the acceleration times the time, not the time squared. And if you want to check, distribute. Multiply this by this, you'll get that. Multiply this by this, and you'll get this. And of course, it all equals zero, which is why this is possible. All right, so now you have two solutions. Either t equals zero, or this big mess equals zero. So t equals zero, zero is a trivial solution. So we're asking, when is the golf ball on the ground? One time it's on the ground is at the beginning of the problem, t equals zero. What we really care about is when is the other time it's on the ground over here. So we've got to solve this little equation here for t. So bring vy zero to the other side, multiply by both sides by two, divide both sides by a, and you'll have t by itself. So there's an algebraic solution for the time that it's in the air. Plug in your numbers. Remember the velocity in the y direction is 30. And it turns out the ball is in the air about 6.12 seconds, which is just a little longer than we estimated in our conceptual example on the previous slide. All right, lastly, we're going to evaluate the range. The distance it goes horizontally is given by this expression. But of course, there's no acceleration in the x direction, so that goes away. So we take the velocity in the x direction initial, which is 40, and we multiply it by the time, which was 6.12, and we will have the range, which is 245 meters. So the golf ball goes 245 meters, which is pretty darn close to what we estimated in the previous example that we um, solved conceptually. All right, so the important thing to note on this problem is that we did not need the quadratic equation. Because delta y was zero, we could solve this by factoring a t out, and that gave us an easy way to find the solution. All right, my last example is um, what happens if you throw it from the top of a building? So here's what's going on here. You're on the top of a 30 meter tall building. You chuck a ball and we wanna know where does it land? How far does it go horizontally, okay? So in this case, it starts here and it ends on the ground and the building is 30 meters tall. So what we do know is that the acceleration in the x direction is zero. And now we know delta y. It starts here and it ends on the ground. So delta y is no longer zero. It's negative 30 meters. We also know the acceleration of the y is negative 9.81. We can find the components of the velocity in the x direction, which is 8.6 meters per second, and in the y direction, which is 12.3 meters per second. Okay. We can now solve the y problem for the time, but delta y is not zero, the velocity in the y direction is not zero, 
it's this. And of course, the acceleration in the y direction is not zero. So when you have that case, all three of those are not zero. You cannot solve the quadratic equation quickly. You have to use the entire quadratic formula. So at this point, you can just rewrite it with the numbers. Delta y is negative 30. Velocity in the y direction is 12.3 times t. And then one half the acceleration in the y direction is negative 4.905 times t squared. This is the equation we're solving. Now to solve the quadratic equation, we've got to make sure it equals zero. So I've got to bring this term to the other side, which makes it positive. So this is what is going to be c in my quadratic formula. This is b, and negative 4.905 is a. So my solution is going to look like this. I'm just going to write out the quadratic formula. It's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, so b is this squared, minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Run that through your calculator twice, once with a plus and once with a minus. You'll get two solutions. The solution we are looking for is when time is positive, so that's 4.02 seconds. Okay, so when you launch it from a position and it lands at a different height, you are going to have to solve the full quadratic equation to get your solutions. Okay, all right, uh, once we know the time, we can evaluate the x expression to find the distance it goes horizontally because there's no acceleration in the y direction. So we plug in our numbers there, and it turns out this goes 34.6 meters. Okay, all right, so that's uh, how we solve problems that involve general projectiles that are not launched horizontally. Um, and the big difference is it's just a little more work to find the time for these, okay? Make sure you make a complete diagram. You need to show the path of the ball from, or the object from beginning to end and show your coordinate system. Show your variable lists and then make sure you enumerate your steps. There's four steps here, so make sure you number them so I can follow them in order, okay? All right, good luck.